I think I want to leave Beijing, y'all. I think my time has come, and I'm pretty sure I'm ready to go. Today is September fifth, twenty twenty-two. I feel like I have spent the whole summer traveling and publishing old content, and haven't given you guys like a proper life update. I am making this vlog for myself. And of course, for you guys, because I've been considering for a really long time to leave Beijing. If you saw my video about making friends in Chongqing, I briefly mentioned that I was considering moving there. The gag is I didn't move. <laughs> I'm not going to move right away, but I am thinking about making the move to another city in China in August of 2023 when my lease is up. So let me explain. For me, Beijing has been an incredible starter Chinese city. I've had my shares of ups and downs. I've made it through all of the COVID changes, lockdowns, restrictions, regulations, all of the things, and I'm feeling like it is almost time for me to close this chapter in Beijing. A big Reason I am feeling this way is just like any place in the world, Beijing is getting increasingly expensive. I think my eyes were really opened last year when I was looking for an apartment, and I was just shocked at how expensive the prices have gotten, especially for the quality, the neighborhood, the size. The This is the AC and the heating, right? I don't know what happened here. I feel like you're just paying for the view. The prices in Beijing are increasing very quickly, and the salaries aren't increasing that much that it like for me to want to stay. As you guys know, I have a lot of friends who live all over China in first tier cities and second tier cities, and when I talk to them about the cost of living versus their salary, it is just night and day, really. And it's just not like that for me in Beijing. I think it's important to know that, of course, my lifestyle has a lot to do with the amount of money I spend and I save. But for the last year, I have been working at a public school, which doesn't have that big of a budget, so I can't make like oodles and oodles of money there. And that is the life I chose. I have worked at private international boarding schools before in China, where I can make a lot. Of money, but I will say that the work environment is not suited for my lifestyle and、um, what I want to get out of my life in China. I just can't really work a nine to five. I mean, I think after living in Beijing for this long and knowing all of the schools and knowing people that have worked everywhere, I、um, just couldn't be any happier to work at a public school that is low stress and minimum effort. But with minimum effort. Comes minimum dollars, so I don't get all of those fancy benefits that I used to. And in an increasingly expensive city like Beijing, I just am not saving the amount of money that I want to save. So for me, it's just making a lot of sense to move to a second tier city. Well, let me break it down with the pros and the cons. Air pollution is a pretty big problem in China, and Beijing is one of those cities that has pretty bad air quality. In the winter time, there are months where the sky is just gray, and it's not gray from clouds; gray from pollution. Compared to some other Chinese cities, Beijing, being the capital, of course, has a very heavy-handed government. So when it comes to rules, regulations, policies, Beijing sets them, and Beijing is usually the first to enact or follow them. Especially when it comes to education policies and COVID policies. It was just last year that China changed a whole bunch of its education policies, which forced loads of training centers to close, private tutoring to be illegal, school hours were shortened, and a bunch of other things. But what? 
what that meant for a lot of foreigners here who worked in training centers. A lot of them lost their jobs like boom. But there are other cities and other provinces that maybe don't take this law as seriously or have found some loopholes around it. But uh, things change very quickly and very drastically here in Beijing. That's also the case with COVID regulations. So in Beijing, we are still wearing masks at school and in public places and on the subway and in malls. In Beijing, we are still getting COVID tests every 72 hours, even though there are basically zero cases. If your village or community has one positive case, and if you live in the contained area and controlled area, if you have any abnormality in your household, you are not allowed to get out of the city. And for the others, if not necessary, you are not advised to go out of Beijing. And before getting on board, you need to show your nucleic acid test result within the last 48 hours. And also the railway station, the airport will check up your call, even if on the highways. And if you go out of Beijing against the rules and regulations leading to the further transmission of the virus, you will be held accountable. Weather in Beijing is just, meh. I mean, I'm from Michigan, which is pretty cold, but also pretty hot in the summer and has beautiful falls and lovely spring. And that's actually a lot like Beijing. Beijing winters are long and very harsh. There is really no snow here. I think it's snowed maybe five times since I've lived here, but the summer, this heat is no joke. The spring is far too short. Spring is like a month and fall is like, a month and a half. Prices of apartments in Beijing are just getting so, so expensive. The rent prices in Beijing are just skyrocketing. This is not just coming from me. This is also coming from local Beijingers who are getting priced out of the city and need to move to like the neighboring Tianjin and commute every single day on the train. It's a little hard to figure out maybe the median price for an apartment in Beijing um, because a lot of it depends on the location. Let's say you want to live within a a 30 minute drive to downtown Beijing and you want to live in maybe a more foreign friendly area, then you're going to be looking at maybe 7,000 to 8,000 renminbi per month in an apartment, which is damn near a thousand US dollars. And that's just for a one bedroom. I mean, if you're open to sharing with roommates, there's lots of shared apartments, but that's not really my thing. So I got very very lucky paying 6200 a month in my rent, but it is still very expensive and I live very far from downtown Beijing. Along with the increasing rent prices, I think the general cost of living in Beijing is going up. Inflation is pretty high and if you are like me and you like to eat international food and go to international restaurants and you are going to be paying American prices to eat dinners, which, you know, can get you broke real quick. Let's get into the positives. To live in Beijing, you do not need to speak a whole lot of Chinese. You can survive and even thrive just knowing yi dian dian. Oh, yi dian dian. <laughs> and of course it's important to learn Chinese, but let's be real, it's hard and I'm an adult, which means my motivation for learning new things is very low. So if you are someone who is not at all interested in learning Chinese beyond the basics, then you will be totally fine in Beijing. Beijing also has a lot of opportunities for non-teaching jobs for a lot of people who don't speak Chinese. Being the capital city here in China means it's a big draw for both local and international companies that are looking to hire foreign talents. So if you get here as a teacher and decide you want to have a career change, there are lots of opportunities to do that in this city. 
in Beijing, I think that you will be able to find more local people who have more of a global mindset, who have traveled, who have studied abroad. And these are the types of people who feel refreshing. You live in China and all day long people are staring at you and taking your pictures and touching you and maybe saying ignorant or inappropriate things to you. It can be really frustrating. But here in Beijing, there are a lot of people who are not like that at all, who have been different like us, who have been foreigners in other countries and are welcoming and understanding and sympathetic to what it's like being a different one in this country. The landmarks. I mean, that is one of the biggest draws about living in Beijing. Great Wall is in your backyard. I've been to the Great Wall so many times, so many different sections, and every single time I'm amazed. Beijing is a beautiful mix of history meets modern. Well, that's it. I've laid out the pros and the cons of living here in Beijing. China has it brought me closer to a decision about staying here? No, it hasn't. <laughs> I don't know if the bad outweighs the good or the good outweighs the bad. I think for me, who's lived here for a handful of years, I know when I'm ready to go. Leaving never means forever. So I'm just trying not to put pressure on myself. I still have a whole 11 months to decide. So I will decide. But stay tuned for my next video where I will be discussing the pros and the cons of living in a second or third tier city. And maybe by that video, I will have convinced myself to make some sort of decision. I don't know. <laughs> Elise Lightyear, over and out.